Lou Reed and dog news now. <laughs> Andy. If it's you about like... time we, we address this subject, John. It's not... God, I've waited so long to say that sentence out loud. <laughs> Andy, if you liked Lou Reed before, and I know you did, yeah. get ready to like him a whole lot more. Because Lou Reed and his artist wife, Laurie Anderson, are going to stage a high-frequency concert for dogs. <laughs> and that's, that's something that's actually going to happen, Andy. It's not just a sentence that someone thought correctly was funny. Music for dogs is going to be held outside the Sydney Opera House uh, and is being billed as an interspecies social gathering on a scale never seen before in Australia. Well, hold on, hold on. That seems to imply there's a precedent for this. What's been going on in Australia? Have they been regularly staging small-scale dog concerts featuring ex-members of the Velvet Underground? <laughs> Who can forget John Cale's intimate evening electronica for chihuahuas? <laughs> or Maureen Tucker's drumming for dash huns? Such ma magical evenings. I like this interspecies social gathering. Yeah. You know, I don't, also, how do they know? Australia's been there a long time. Who knows, in the midst of prehistory, maybe there was a great big kangaroo and platypus table tennis competition that we now know nothing about. Yeah, yeah it's rather uh, it, cocky it to suggest that this is the best ever. It's, it's, it's hard now. to know what they're doing down there. Yeah. But, uh, of course, some critics have said that Lou Reed is now finally crossing the line between unlistenable and inaudible, which is a fine but important line in music. And, of course, there hasn't been a lot of uh, frontline popular music for dogs uh, ever since Kate Bush's Wuthering Heights. So it's, uh, it's a big, big step forward for the canine music fans. The concert this month will, obviously, be largely inaudible to the human ear. And are we absolutely sure that Lou Reed is actually going to be playing music, Andy? <laughs> this seems like an Emperor's New Clothes situation. Could it be that Lou Reed had an unexpectedly large tax bill and he's going to stage <laughs> some quick fake dog concerts to raise some money fast. Uh, Laurie Anderson said that the inspiration for the performance uh, came to her during the Vivid Live Festival in Sydney uh, when she was backstage at an event and thought, wouldn't it be great if you're playing a concert and you look out and all you see are dogs? <laughs> <laughs> I've had gigs like that. Well, that's it. It's a phenomenal thought to have. I personally have often felt that during gigs. Wouldn't it be great if this entire theatre was just dogs? <laughs> it would explain why they weren't laughing. I just, didn't, <laughs> just didn't understand. I just hope that these dogs in Sydney know what they're getting themselves into, Andy. This is not your Lionel Richie's music for dogs. This is Lou f***ing Reed. <laughs> this is going to be some willfully avant-garde dog music. Those canines are going to be a split crowd. Just be prepared. Most of them are going to get it. Some are going to be confused. A hardcore few are going to absolutely love it. Some are going to pretend to like it. And statistically, some are going to urinate and defecate publicly during it. <laughs> Let's just all accept what's about to happen. This isn't the first time there's been music for dogs, though. In uh, 2007... New Zealand's Christmas number one chart single was a hit called A Very Silent Night, which is a charity single audible only to dogs, apparently. That raised Hold on, is several... that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just presumed you were no, lying. No, not lying. And a spokesman said that not all dogs had reacted that well to it. Quotes, the most violent one was a dog that physically attacked the radio when it was played <laughs> and went quite berserk and to <laughs> totally destroyed it. So got it. who knows what the lyrics were? Maybe it was cats are great. That's Dogs are shit. <laughs> uh, just snap, like that. Cats are great. <laughs> what are you going to do about it, dogs? Are you going to tag a radio? We know that dogs are sensitive about these things as a, yeah. as a species. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I have to say, John, I bet uh, Lou Reed's wife couldn't believe it when he broke, uh, broke, broke the news to her that they were going to do this concert. I mean, she must have had to pinch herself. I mean, she must have shook oh, her no. head. Uh, yep. Oh, no, I think I can see what's happening Strap here. Strap in here. Yep. She mastiff had to pinch herself. Yep. Yeah, OK. Concert yeah. for dogs, Lou, she said. I know you're avant-garde, but what's the point of that? But Lou Reed soon set her straight. He said, shh, now's uh, the time and a place for complaining. This is a great opportunity for us, dear. I tell you, we can't bass it up. I'll put a band together and whip it into shape. OK, she said, but make sure it's a cosmopolitan band. Get an English guy on drums and someone from Tehran on rhythm guitars. Hang on, love, I'll just write that down. Pom, Iranian. Anyone else? Yep, for backing vocals, get the lead singer from the in influential synth-pop band Kraftwerk and uh, maybe that famous American actress and occasional singer who starred in Moonlighting. OK, German, Shepherd. And on drums, <laughs> hang on, interrupted Lou Reed, Dax and Duff. The preparations then began. They started to pack their bags. Lou How said, did that not stop at that point? <laughs> How did that not stop when you inhaled? 
<laughs> Lou said, oh no, I can't find that lovely knitted sweater I bought when I did that gig in Dublin. Laurie, his wife, soon located it. Here it is, Lou. Irish wool found. By the way... <laughs> by the way, did you find our annoying neighbour's skillet that you borrowed? F***ing Charles Spann. Yeah, I'll take it round later. Did that quite work? No. F***ing Charles Spann. Yeah, I'll... Yeah, no, you. no, it didn't. No. Ma make sure him or his missus get is there when you give it back. Dow may sure no one can say we've still got it. Soon Laurie was ready to go. <laughs> Soon Laurie was ready to go. Hawkeye, do you mind if I tell my friend? You oh, know, shame on you. <laughs> you know the lady from number 35 who you really don't like? What? Shih Tzu? I wish you wouldn't call her that, dear. <laughs> okay, it's very rude. Good. Okay. And anyway, why don't you like her? Well, because she talks rot while her huge husband scares me. Oh, I mean, he's a big old bastard. Big old, big old... Bastard. No. Last, last time you told her one about one of my gigs, she just talked about it endlessly at work. She really bored her colleagues. Oh, they they climbed okay. into their that's car. Really <laughs> they climbed into their car to go to the airport to Australia. Oh, wow, said Laurie. Talking. I've had a, I've had such a great day. Mm, it's only still lunchtime. Hang on, said Lou suddenly. We better do some publicity for this gig. Can I borrow twenty bucks for some posters for it? Sure, pay me back next week, replied his wife, <laughs> and get me a box of chocolates to say thanks. My purse is on the back seat. I'll just reach back and get it. Have you told any of your old music buddies uh, uh, about it? Um, Husky, Husky Richards called. Husky Keith Richards. No, said Lou, but I told uh, ex Velvet drummer Maureen Tucker all about it. I really talked it up. Second appearance from Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, I really talked it up, said Lou. Jewawa. Sure did wow her. She was well impressed, said Lou. I'm so excited about this gig. If it goes well, I want to take the show to dogs all around the world. Well, let's just see how it goes first, love, cautioned his wife. Don't start thinking about an elaborate tour. Elaborate tour? Mm -hmm. not, not yet. I mean, it's going to be a logistical challenge anyway. I mean, for a start, wouldn't I have to clean the, clean the auditorium? Not after a crowd of dogs has poodle over it. And if any promoter asks you to do a gig for cats, I'd be hesitant. I'll say shun that offer. Suddenly, loose land on the brakes. Cripes. That Indian chef just spilt a load of melted butter on the road. Oh, yeah? That, that was happened? close. Core. Ghee. This is the last thing I wanted to see. Uh... <laughs> As they pull into the airport. Ah, uh, no! Sorry. Hold on. I, before you get going at it, I just need to set out a primal scream. Ah! Uh... <laughs> okay, carry on. As they pulled into the airport, there's only one to go. They drove past a textile maker who'd fallen into the icy Hudson River and just climbed out. Look, darling, said Lou Reed. It's a cold and wet weaver. <laughs> <laughs> but that was worth the wait. <laughs> a cold and wet weaver. <laughs> I resign. <laughs> Who says I don't use my degree? Oh no! How, how many was that? Thirty-one. I reckon at least three of those are completely inadmissible. Aren't they? <coughs> Which ones? I, I'm not. I'm not going back over it. <coughs> I just think three of them were completely ridiculous. Although I will give you cold and wet weather, <coughs> and there are a couple of other absolute gems in there as well. But I don't want this in any way, like right. occasional positive comment. I don't want you to see that as encouragement. I, I remain, as I do after every run of puns, <coughs> hoping that it will never happen again. Right. Whilst knowing it is likely to. Yep.